scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Are you blessed in the name of the Lord? Father, thank you. Dear people of prayer, this is an encounter conference. You're crying for the spirit of revelation. Thank you, Jesus. Let your word come with power to change, to lift, to transform in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, you may be seated. I take very seriously every opportunity that I have to teach and to challenge God's people because I have come to learn from scripture and even by experience that the only way believers mature, the only way they grow is through the sound teaching of the word of God. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 says, I will give you shepherds or pastors after my heart. And the Bible says that they will feed you with knowledge they will feed you with understanding so when believers are exposed to the word of god they are empowered to number one reflect christ in experience please pay attention number two they are empowered with the tools that make them walk in victory experientially it is one thing to know the potentials that are captured in the word of God as far as the victory of the believer is concerned. But we must learn the ways of God that can make that victory written here to become a reality in my life and in your life. Are we together now? I have always challenged believers that in addition to conforming to the image and the character of the Christ, it is important that believers make progress in their lives. That you are able to look at your life and know that you are moving from one level to the other. Psychologically speaking, one of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress. If and when you are unable to make constructive progress, sooner or later, you will be frustrated. Are we together? So a conference like this is designed to help us and to lift us, to remind us, to renew our understanding to challenge us along the lines of new thoughts. And um, I'd like for us to pay attention. It will be a brief session tonight, but I pray that it will be a meaningful one. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two things very quickly. Generally, there are two factors responsible for transformation. It is called your teachability index. Number one is your willingness to learn. And number two, is your willingness to change these two factors are very important and they are responsible for the rate of transformation of any individual a measure of your ability to learn and your ability to change if you have a 
very high rate of your ability, your passion to learn, you are going to become very knowledgeable. But if you do not have a passion to change, you will become like the people in scripture who are ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. And I can tell you, based on the authority of God's word, it is very frustrating to know what should be, and yet not enter into the experience of it. It says, now that you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Hallelujah. So as we hear the word of God, it is important that we are very intentional about number one, learning, and then number two, to allow the word of God permeate our spirits and to permeate our minds, our thinkings, to challenge our philosophies and our ideas about life. Until we change and we sustain the mind of Christ, we will never be able to experience the realities that befit the mind of Christ. The Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so he is. Are we together? Yes. I just thought to say that because sometimes, um, especially in conferences like this, we can get very casual about the truths that come. And we just open up our hearts for the sake of the ritual of reception with no intention to really receive it as a word from God and to be transformed. It is my um, plea, therefore, lending my voice with your pastor and the leaders in this great ministry, that we open up our hearts today very and, and be very intentional that the word that is coming is not just for, for um, awareness. It is coming from God through a man to me, to enlighten me and then to empower me to move to my next level. If that is true for you, shout Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And then while seated, i like to speak over your life and then we'll pray as a way of um, starting this, my discussion proper. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. I'm interested in the A part, Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. Please say amen. amen. Let me repeat it one more time that in the name of Jesus, no weapon that is formed or fashioned against you shall prosper. Well seated, can you turn it into a prayer in one minute that I decree and declare in this season? Go ahead and pray. This is a believing church. Decree and declare no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. No weapon fashioned. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. No arsenal of darkness against my destiny, my advancement in this kingdom and this life will prosper. Fortified by the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke chapter 8. You are about to learn something tonight that I believe for many of us will be the bridge from the season where you are to the next season of your life and destiny in the name of Jesus. I truly believe with all my heart that as you open up your heart to learn, finally the Spirit of God will connect the dots for you and you will make maximum kingdom advancement even after tonight. Luke chapter 8, and I'll start my reading from verse 22. Luke 8, 22. Now it came to pass... You can look up his projected if you can see it. Now it came to pass on a certain day, right, that he went into a ship, the he being Jesus, with his disciples. And he said unto them, let us go over onto the other side of the lake. And the Bible says, they launched forth. Uh-huh. Next verse. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. 24. 
And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying unto one another, What manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and the water, and they obey him. We'll pause here. Please go back to verse 22. The Bible lets us know that this is a very interesting, you know, a, a very interesting story. The Bible says it was on a certain day. So we know that this is not a parable. It happened a certain day. That Jesus came to the ship with his disciples. Before this time, he had made tremendous progress preaching the gospel holding his crusades doing mighty and great things miracles signs and wonders and he desired that they go to the other side so you must understand how the story starts the story starts with a desire to go over to the other side are we together now and then the bible says they launched forth with that motivation that he intended to go to the other side so that they could experience his power, his grace, his salvation. But then the Bible says that as they sojourned, certain things began to happen. Jesus lay to rest and there was a storm of wind. And there was a storm of wind. The first thing I want to say tonight is that there are times when challenges prove to you that you are getting it right. It is not always true that every challenge you face may be a proof that you are getting it wrong. The Bible says here that it was because of their desire to go to the other side. That means if they did not take the step to go to the other side, there would be no issue of storms at all. Hallelujah. There are times that the challenges and the storms that we face in our lives, it may not be true that they are because we have backslidden or because we have not trusted God enough. In fact, many times those challenges come to prove that we are making progress in life. You would think that because Jesus was in the boat, a storm would not arise. Jesus did not join them. He started the journey with them. Yet the storm still came. If the storm came for Jesus, it means it should not be unusual when storms come over believers. They did not ask him to join them when the storm started. He started the journey with them. In fact, he proposed the journey. The all-knowing God, the all-seeing God, now as a man proposes a journey, did he not factor? So the fact, where was his vision? Where was his ability to see the end from the beginning? The storm seems to have taken them by surprise. They came to him and they said, we are disappointed. You are Jesus. Where was the grace that saw Nathaniel under a tree? That now we are on a journey and we are faced with a storm. Many times, just because God told you that you will go this way and you will be great, when you face challenges, most of us turn back as though the voice of God were supposed to magically exempt you from storms. The Bible here is teaching us, are we making progress now? The Bible is teaching us that even Jesus was not immune to the presence of storms. If the storm came with Jesus in the boat, then the storm can come with, to end making progress. Lord, why is this happening to me? Why is my business failing? Why am I not excelling in ministry? And we begin to ask these questions and the devil buys into our emotions to make us believe that we did not hear God. And you know, believers have a very interesting way of making people feel that whatever challenges that they have before them is proof that they did not hear well. Sometimes challenges are proof that you heard well. Are we together? So, 
They began their journey as proposed by Jesus himself. Let us go over to the other side. And the Bible says there was a storm of wind. Please look up. A storm is made up of um, two dimensions or two elements, if I would use that expression. Number one is water. Number two is wind. Please pay attention. It is the wind that powers the water to be boisterous. You may not be able to see the wind, but you can see the effect of the wind in whatever happens with the water. Are we together? Now, that means that every storm has two sides to it. There is the water that you can see, the obvious problem that you are blaming. But there is a wind that you cannot see that is empowering that water. Are we together now? So that the issue is not just a rent issue. The issue is not just a business issue. The issue is not just your boss. The issue is not just your relatives. Oh, Joseph, the issue is not just the well. The issue is not just your brothers. That every storm is made of water and wind. Physical or visible and invisible. So in confronting storms, you are already in error if you focus only on the water. Are we together now? The first thing in addressing, because this scripture here is teaching us that it is not unusual to have storms, but it is also teaching us how to triumph over storms. That in dealing with storms, you do not start with water. When Jesus Manage the storm. He started by rebuking the wind. The force that powers the water. Are, are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Very simple but powerful teaching. Because you see, Satan is the master of the sense realm. And he knows that for as long as he keeps creating men and situations, they will distract you and you may not know that he is the force behind it. You will point fingers at individuals and the individuals may have legitimate blames, but that behind every storm, the real reason why the water is boisterous is the wind. The water is only a slave to the wind. The boss may only be a slave to a spiritual manifestation somewhere. This is why the Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Is God speaking to us now? That every time you are approaching issues of life and destiny, your first port of call should be the realm of the spirit. If you route it by any other agency, you will fail. Every storm is made of wind and water. Please say after me, wind and water. So just when the Lord tells you he's ready to manifest his power and glory over your life, you begin to have a misunderstanding with your wife that you cannot understand where it is coming from and where it is going to. That is water. There is a wind that is powering that. Spiritual men don't just talk physically. They know that what is happening is as a result of destiny. The moment you begin to find confusion around your life, it is proof that the realm of the spirit has, they have heard that you are going forward. Let us go over to the other side. The Bible says, John chapter 10 and verse 10, The thief cometh not, but for to steal to kill and to destroy. Look at me. That means before the thief comes, he vets whether there is something worth killing what stealing that means the presence of the thief is proof you are that valuable now please understand this the thief has no business being in a place until there is treasure enough to steal treasure enough to kill and treasure enough to destroy could it be that his insistence over your destiny is proof that you are not even aware of what god placed in your own life Satan can be used as a confirmation that you are valuable. Are you learning tonight? Yes. So, let us go over to the other side in business. 
let us go over to the other side in ministry the other side as far as my pursuit for god and the things of the spirit are concerned and you begin that journey and here comes the storm the storm is made of wind oh man of god hear this this may be a word for you Oh, businessman, hear this. This may be a word for you. The storm is not proof that your spiritual life has gone down. Don't let the devil lie to you. The storm, the quarrel in your home right now, is, is not proof that you are not faithful. It's not proof. Many times it is because the devil wants to distract you so that you will go back. I can tell you, if they made up their minds to go back, the storm would cease. The same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue. Whether you go back or go forward, it will still take energy. We're dealing with Luke 8 now. And then the interesting thing is that the Bible says Jesus was sleeping. You don't want a Savior to be sleeping during a storm. You want a Savior to be alive. But Jesus was sleeping. And you would, thought, you, you, you would think that um, as, as boys, terrors as the storm was, he, it would wake him up. Jesus was still sleeping. That means, listen, this is very powerful. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Why will Jesus be sleeping in a boat that is raging left, right and center? He did not wake up. He was sleeping. It took them waking him to say, Master, care us not that we perish. Because he knew for sure that he would not perish. Are we together now? They never said, Jesus, wake up. Your life is in danger. They said, we, there is something about your mentality that even the storm does not affect you. We know you are fortified. You have your thinking. You have a mindset that will not allow storms to move you. But help us. Have mercy on us. We are still trying to grow. Can I tell you this? There is a lesson here for everyone to learn. Two people were in the same storm. One sleeping, the other one shouting. Let this mind be in you. Sometimes you see people rejoice and praise the Lord until you hear what they are rejoicing over. They are rejoicing over pain. They are rejoicing over disappointment. The man can be singing and clapping and there are bills to the billions to pay. He has received a mentality that God, God's, God's jealousy defends him. And that there will be a way. The end will be victory. This is how we think in the kingdom. Please understand this. We live in a world that is very passionate about attracting sympathy. And sometimes we, we tend to believe that just because we have justifiable reasons to feel bad, we can throw away everything and blame everybody and get angry. People do foolish things in society and justify it. Why did you steal? Well, there's poverty in the country. Why are you not serious? Well, there is no job. But Jesus had a mentality. This is the second thing I want us to learn. The first is about the reality of storms. That it happens to all men, including Jesus. And then number two, there was a mentality that Jesus had. Even in the midst of the storm, he was asleep. That looks to me like the scripture that says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Now here's the secret. For thou art with me. It didn't say for thou art talking to me. There are times that you don't have to wait for the storm to be calm to rejoice. Just verify if Jesus is there. The moment Jesus is there in the boat, begin to find rest. You can fail alone, but you and Jesus cannot fail together. If you are the only one in the boat... Even if you are a skilled man at sea, you begin to be afraid. But if you check that boat and you verify that Jesus is there, even if he is sleeping or seems to be sleeping, find rest. The first reason why we find rest in this kingdom is not because the storm is over. It is because Jesus is in the boat. 
Oh, this is, this is a prophetic word to someone right now. I may not know how the solution will come. I may not know what to do. I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I began a journey to start a business and now I'm in debt to the millions and the billions. Uh, it was because of my desire to go to the other side. The other side of my destiny. I can't remain at this level. For the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. There are many people who do not have storms. It's not necessarily a proof of spirituality. It's proof that they are so cowardly they don't have the courage to go to the other side. Are we learning now? It takes courage. A storm must, must be sure that you are worth its attention to come to you. Now, learn this lesson. Number one, storms happen to all men including jesus it is not unusual one of the scriptures that baffled me for many years is this statement in revelation and there was war in heaven war in heaven heaven is your throne with the all-seeing eye omniscient omnipresent there was still war in heaven Notice the character of God in both cases. God never stood up from his throne because of the war. He was still seated at rest. There was already a system put in place. Listen, learn this. Rest is proof of faith. Rest is proof of faith. You may need to prophesy to yourself. Say, myself, find rest. Myself, find rest. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city, said the watchman watched but in vain. It is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. But he gives his beloved sleep. Are we together? So there is a mentality that was in Jesus that I'm proposing to us. Every time you seem to not have control over the issues in your life, forget about the issues and verify in that boat, is Jesus there? He can be there as the prophetic word he gave you. He can be there as the word of God that you hold on to. Are we together now? Yes. This home... Now, it's three years, five years, six years, we're trusting God for children, and it looks like children are not forthcoming. That is a storm. It was a desire to raise a generation of prophets and apostles who will frontier the kingdom. Now a storm has come, and all kinds of naysayers will be around you trying to discourage you to say, go back. Remember what I told you, the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue. Jesus had a mentality. He was so at rest. And they tapped him and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish. Please give us the scripture. Verse, that will be verse 23 or 24. Luke chapter 8, verse 23 or 24. Luke chapter 8. Master, he says, Carest thou not that we perish. And the Bible says, do you know, the Bible says, verse 24 is the verse. And they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose. Jesus Never told them one word until the storm was over. He didn't say, gentlemen, how are you just become? No, he turned to the wind. Not the water. Jesus addresses storms by starting with the wind. The spirit, the force from the realm of the spirit that brings that storm. And he said, peace, another synoptic account says, be still. And there was a great calm. 
And then he now turned to the people and said, Now that I'm done with the storm, let me teach you something. Where is your faith? He turns to the wind. Like someone is going to turn to the wind this night. That it is time for me to move forward. And thou storm that is standing before me, manipulating things, acting as though it's a financial problem, acting as though it's a marriage problem, acting as though it's a health problem. Just when they say you are about to be promoted, you touch yourself and it looks like there is a growth somewhere and the devil starts telling you cancer. So this is how you are going to die. That is a storm. It is not the swelling. There is a spirit. There is a way that we deal with storms. Jesus is giving us a lecture that you deal with storms by rebuking the wind. You only rebuke what is alive. You don't rebuke what is dead. That means the wind had life and it could hear the force that is behind the tragedy the force that is behind that is causing an impedance to your journey can hear and if you know how to speak as a priest that storm can be calm you don't have to bother about the water let the wind seize its influence and the water will come back to normal. So the issue is not just a financial problem. The issue is not just a marital problem. The issue is not just job. The issue is not just your destiny helpers forgetting you. There is wind that is making the water to be boisterous. But imagine the labor they would have gone to trying to look for a container to fetch the water out one by one. One, imagine you are trying to fetch it out and it's coming into the boat again. It would have killed them there. That's how many of us try to manage challenges. Now, Jesus is teaching us a lesson here. That for every storm, please pay attention. There is wind and there is water. And that you can stand in the name of Jesus Christ. And take authority over the wind. And you go to your office by the next day. And the same boss who vowed that you must leave this office comes to you and says, you know, I've been thinking about you. Where did you say you come from? And now you know that that is water without the influence of the wind now. Are we together now? Verse 25. Jesus said to them, verse 25 now, where is your faith? We'll continue our reading. And being afraid, the one that saying to one another, I'm reading from KJV, what manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and water, and they obey him. The Bible now says they proceeded with their journey. Verse 26. The Bible says, and they arrived. Say, I must arrive. Oh, in spite of the storm, the Bible says they arrived. Just stop there. Don't rush. We are dealing with... This is scripture. This is good news. That regardless what they met on the way, the final thing is that they... And I prospered. And I went forward. Your story is not complete until this is captured in the story. So, when you are telling me about the challenges, I'm interested, but not as interested as this. I want to know, did you have the staying power to arrive? Someone prophesy, say, I arrive. Say, I arrive. Hallelujah, I arrive financially. That, that destination, I arrive in the name of Jesus. You may laugh at me because you are watching the storm, but it's not over. I arrive in the name of Jesus. I arrive. I arrive. Regardless the naysayers. I arrive by the power of the Holy Spirit. In ministry, I make progress. I arrive. Financially, I arrive. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. I arrive. Not only me, my family will also arrive. Please sit down. And they arrived. How many of them arrived? All those who started. Not some. Let me use this to prophesy to someone. There will be no loss. When you started this journey, you started with your spiritual life. Your finances. 
everything that started with you will also arrive you will not leave your spiritual life in the boat it will not fall by the wayside just because you want to make progress don't lose your spiritual life don't lose your finances don't lose your relationships don't lose your courage everything that started that journey should arrive also he didn't say and he arrived and they and my children arrived and my company arrived and ministry arrived and my spiritual life arrived yes i came from a family of idol worship but i made up my mind to go to the other side and and on my way for 10 years i made captivity but i still turn it into a prayer in one minute the grace that makes a man arrive in the name of jesus christ you're going to be seated but i like you to pray i just felt that this is a place to declare the grace i arrive i arrive this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind i press on to towards the mark of the high calling in christ i arrive i arrive I didn't start the journey to die in the sea. I didn't start the journey to bow to storms. I didn't start the journey ministry to bow to pressure. I didn't start the journey to bow to status quo. I started intending to arrive. And until I see the other side, I am not yet there. There was a level of the anointing when I began my pursuit for God. You are praying. Hallelujah. Please look up. Hear me until you can see the other side don't stop moving i arrive does not mean i stop when i was tired i arrive does not mean i stop because time was going i arrive means i finally saw physically what was in my spirit when i started are we learning please sit down let's finish up that scripture I'm just walking you through these scriptures. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. Now, next verse. <laughs> and when he went forth to the land, there met him out of a city a certain man. Now, you would think that when he was done with storms, he would never meet any again. As soon as he arrives the new level, it was not the prime minister who came to greet him. As soon as he arrived there, it was a madman who stood there and the Bible says he had devils long time and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in tombs. My first question is who told the madman there were people coming from the other side? I, I can perceive a relationship between the storm and the demons in this man. That as soon as he arrives, he meets the madman who is also like the water and the wind. In this case, the man being the water, the wind being the spirits that had kept him bound for a long time. Follow the discourse. Next verse, please. And the Bible says... And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell before him and with a loud voice said, what have, you, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. 29. For he had commanded the unclean spirit. You see the formula again? Not the man. Every time you see storms, whether in human forms, whether in whatever, the approach is the spirit first. Jesus did not reply the man like he did not reply the men. He did not reply the water. He went straight to the wind, the spirit component in that situation. And the Bible says he rebuked, he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Then the Bible gives us added information that for oft times it had caught him and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters and he broke the bands and was driven of them, of the devils into the wilderness. Uh -huh. And Jesus asked him, 
Now that he was free, saying, Okay, he's giving us an information. What is thy name? And he said, Legion. Because many devils were entered into him. Watch this. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. 32. Watch this. It says, And there was there a herd of many swine feeding where? On the mountain. Leave that for another day. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter them. And he suffered them. The word suffer means permit. And the Bible says, And when the devils went out of the man, they entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake, and were choked. And they that fed them saw what was done and fled, and went and told it in the city and in the country. Read on. Then they went out to see what was done, and came to Jesus and found the man, out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his... So what kind of mind did he have before? Because the Bible says that he was sitting in his right mind, and they were afraid. 36. They also which saw it told them by the means that he was possessed of the devil was healed. The means that he was possessed of the devil was healed. Next verse. I want to bring out a powerful lesson here. Now watch this. Then the whole multitude of the country of the gatherings round about besought him to depart from them. For they were taken with great fear. And he went up into the ship and returned back again. 38. Now, the man of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away with an instruction. What was the instruction? 39. Return to thy house and show how great things God had done unto thee. And he went his way, watch this, and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done to him. Jesus said, now that we've done this, let's return back. So why did they really start the journey? All the storms to free one man who was equal to ten cities? Now, it's very interesting when you study scripture that many times you would see Jesus preach in a large crusade. Then he would be with one person investing the same passion. That means in the mind of Jesus, he looks at things from a destiny dimension. That that one man was the evangelist anointed. Now, from hindsight, let's reverse the story. Story, story. Once upon a land called Gadara. Once upon a time, a land called Gadara. God intending to invade that land decided to invest his dream in a man and satan knowing that that man could save the city now turned that man he made he he started attacking the background of that man and eventually the evangelist that was anointed to save 10 cities was staying in tombs with no clothes are you getting it now jesus Intending to save the gatherings, had to inconvenience himself to move to the other side. The spirits, knowing that salvation was coming, they did not see Jesus. They did not see the disciples. They saw salvation coming, not to the man, to the city. Hold on. Do you notice that there were certain people that suffered as a result of that salvation? That meant that they were prospering because of the bondage in the land. The moment the spirit went out, some people's businesses went down. Oh dear. There were people who their prosperity was because there was no salvation in that land. The economy was rising because the purposes of God were bound. As soon as the man was released, the spirit and those in allegiance to it went down. No other person went down in that city.
and Jesus intending to save a city. Could it be that the reason why Jesus also has been intentional about your destiny is because as he looks at you, he's not seeing you. He's seen a 90-year-old prayer that someone from your family prayed as a missionary and said, Oh God, raise somebody from this family who will wipe the tears of everyone. Raise somebody from this region. And Jesus has come in honor to that prayer. Whenever you think it is about you, look beyond you. Whenever you think the attack is about you, look beyond you. Whenever you think the salvation is about you, look beyond you. Every time God comes to you, He comes to you because of the destinies connected to you. Every time Satan comes to you, He comes to you because of the destinies connected to you. There are attacks that have no business happening to you if you were not connected to the kind of destiny you are connected to. The attacks have nothing to do with you. Don't take them personal. Satan is fighting many people through you. That's why the attack looks fierce. If it was about you, he would not waste his time on you. He looked at you, madam, and he saw an evangelist. He looked at you and he saw a prophet. He looked at you and he saw a kingdom financier. And he said, instead of attacking one million people, let's stop this woman from having a child. Let's stop this one from going forward. Is someone learning now? This is giving us spiritual intelligence as believers. So that we can interpret things from the lens of the spirit, from the lens of prophecy, from the lens of destiny. Now you can rejoice in the office and they may not know why. This woman who has been insulted by everybody. Why is it that the more they insult you, the more you rejoice? Tell them I came to house on the rock and I heard a word by the spirit that corrected my understanding. Number one, that storms happen to all men. And storms are very Verification systems that you are really going to the other side. If you did not intend to grow, you will not meet with the challenges. Even Jesus, Jesus and his presence in the boat did not stop the manifestation of the storm. It only stopped the dominion of the storm on the journey. The next thing that I, that I taught you that you need to have at heart is the mind of Christ. There is a mentality that makes men rest in the midst of storms. Can I tell you this? The Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. He says, For thou art with me. That divine presence should be a consolation. Someone declare, say, You are with me. Thou art with me. Thou art with me in the midst of the storm. And then when Jesus woke up, the Bible says, He rebuked the wind and the storm was calm. So the first way we address storms is to rebuke the wind. Next time go to your shop, go to your mall, Go to your business, go to your house. You come back and you see your children bringing reports that are not consistent with the word of God. Just kicking and venting anger on the children will not solve the problem. Always remember, Jesus has taught you what to do with storms. It is not the result. It is not the school. It is not the dull child. Remember, Satan does not attack for nothing. In that child is CEO. In that child is the employment of 5,000 people. Don't blame the innocent child and bring ill-spoken ill words over him. You are a failure, you are dull. No! Satan does not attack failures. If you were a Satan, you will not attack failures. That's a waste of time. The Bible says he knows his time is short. So if Satan can handpick people, out of 7 billion people, when he listed people, you were there. You need to verify what parameter he used. And I've already told you, John 10.10, 10, that he only comes when he finds out there is something worth stealing, something worth killing, 
and something worth destroying. So you can go back and dance in the midst of storms. And they ask you why. You say, number one, the storm has verified that I am valuable. Number two, the storm has verified that in me there are nations. It is better to forget your paddle than to forget Jesus in the boat. Because if it is to calm storms, you don't need skills. You need Jesus. You need skills to move. But there are times that your skills cannot continue the journey. You will need Jesus. There are times that whatever knowledge you have may not be able to continue with you. It is Jesus. And then remember that in your praise and your rest, there is prophecy that you will arrive. Oh, powerful scripture. And they arrived. And they arrived. And they arrived. Even if it's after 10 years, they arrived. <laughs> Apostle, I've not gotten admission for the past 5, 10 years. I bring you a word of hope. While you are talking about admission, prophecy is already saying you arrived. <laughs> Apostle, as I'm speaking right now, there is no place for me to stay. I'm in this church just laughing, but the Lord is waiting for me at home right about now. I may not know what storms you will face, but I can tell you this. If Jesus is in the boat, rejoice. Look up. Let me teach you something. One plus one mathematically is two. Is that true? One plus one demonically is anything less than two. Because Satan does not add. One plus one plus Satan cannot be two. Even if it's not zero, it cannot be two. Because Satan does not add. One plus one plus Jesus is equal to the answer he puts there. The moment you add Jesus to the equation, the answer is no longer scientific. The answer is no longer economic. The answer is, is no longer mathematics. It is the answer he puts there. So he can take 10 years of delay plus 2 years of being raised by a single mom plus 15 years of unemployment plus Jesus and he can put 1 year of victory that is equal to 30 years. 5 years of a wayward life plus two years of limited understanding in church, plus a job that may not give you so much, plus your passion and fire for God, then plus Jesus. And you will be surprised to see what the answer will be. The answer will be the destiny of someone who started working hard from four years. And you say, this is not fair. And he says, Jesus not, does not only add, he can supplement. Anything plus Jesus is the answer he puts there. Let me tell you something. We are wrapping up. There is a very interesting parable I wish I had the time to deal with the scripture. It was the parable about employment. The Bible says a vine owner was drawing people to get into his field. Have you read that, that parable? And he negotiated for a denary with certain people early in the morning. Is that true? So their basis for going to the field was not because they loved the vine owner. It was because they negotiated for a denary. He took them to the field. Later on, he saw some others and said, Why sittest thou idle? They said, No man employ us. And he said, Go. They didn't negotiate. They went because of love and honor to the man. Even at the eleventh hour, one hour to the close of work, he still met another. He said, Go. At the end of it, he paid those who came because they wanted payment. Then those who came because they believed him, he said, Now let me decide how to pay you. He paid them the same amount. And they said, No, there is injustice here. And Jesus said, What is the injustice? I know you came from a lineage of millionaires. 
I know you came from a lineage of those who bless you. And maybe that may be your motivation for loving Jesus. It was not really because you loved him. It was because there was an opportunity. You were told that if you stay with him, he can bless you. Oh dear spiritual employee, you go to the vineyard. Your dinner is coming. But then there are others who said, Lord, if you can make any sense out of this life. My, my background has cheated me already. And he said, also come and join. And when it is time for payment, when he's allocating graces and possibilities, he can bring the grace of one. Oh dear. I'm saying this prophetically because there are people after this conference. You will stand side by side with those who started being diligent even before you were born again. And they will wonder and say, but this is not fair. And you will tell them, the problem is not me. The problem is the one who carried me along in his boat. Jesus Christ, being in your boat, can make the difference. And they arrived. And they arrived. And they arrived. And he met the man at Gadara. Rebuked the spirit out of that man. And the man said, I want to follow you back. He said, no. I came because of you. Now that I'm done with you, I can release you to live out your assignment now. Listen to me. Victory over storms has a purpose to it. The purpose is that Jesus be revealed and that Jesus be glorified. When the storms that have attempted to impede your progress are over, let it not be that when you have built houses and cars and everything, you say, my power and the might of my hand has given me this. He says, but thou shalt remember. That means you can forget. I brought a simple message, but a powerful one tonight. Because everybody here under the sound of my voice, if there is no storm before you now, I can tell you it is proof that you have not yet made a decision to go to the other side. But if it is the other side of business, the other side of your spiritual life, the other side of your kingdom exploits, the other side in ministry, then there is a storm that is before you. Here is my advice. Check that Jesus is in the boat before the storm comes. The storm will not respect you. It will only respect Jesus who is in that boat. As you carry your certificate, verify whether Jesus is there. As you carry your track record of business exploits, realize that there will come dear Peter where your net may not be able to catch fish. If your net does not catch fish, it is not, it is not laziness. There are times that the fish will not come. You will need Jesus. It is only Jesus who can tell the fish to come. Some of you are in this situation right now. You've exhausted everything you know to do intellectually, spiritually, economically, etc. And you are right now in a confused position, not knowing what to do. Number one, find rest. Storms happen to everybody. Even Jesus. Number two, have the mind of Christ. You know that Jesus is in the boat, so find rest. It will not kill you. There is an end. Number three, have the mind of Christ. Superior understanding. Superior understanding that Satan is a master of the sense realm. He will manipulate you into depression and then you will find out that the challenge, every challenge comes in its inflated form. It takes rest, the rest of faith to deflate it down. Sometimes you will worry over things that are not as serious as they look. And then Jesus taught us how to deal with storms. That you speak over the wind. And say in the name of Jesus, this wind making my marriage boisterous, this wind making my academics boisterous, my job, my business, 
this wind making Nigeria boisterous, this wind making my political career, my ministerial calling boisterous, peace, shalom, be still. And the Bible says the wind and even the water obeyed him. And then obtain the same power to continue until you arrive. And when you arrive, remember that the arrival has a purpose. Don't drive and begin to celebrate and forget that there is a madman who holds the salvation of ten cities waiting for. Could it be that the reason why God wants to prosper you is so that you can meet a child someday, pay that child's school fees, who will be the owner of a bank tomorrow, and employ 5,000 people. Can I tell you this? Every time you see the madman in Gadara, look beyond not being clothed. Every time you see a madman in Gadara, they will not come to you as great people. They will come to you as people with their filth. They will come to you as people who are outcasts. They will come needing you. It is amazing that on the other side of your success, the first person you meet is the destiny sent to you. You must have the discernment to not allow the beauty of success be cloud you. As a man of God, when God grants you an anointing after the storms, the attacks, and and now you come to a position of power and influence. Do not forget. For every arrival, there is a madman crying. Businessmen, for every arrival, there is a madman crying. He's holding the destiny of ten cities. Some of you have arrived. And all you are doing at the seashore is a party celebration. And there are madmen crying and saying, is this not why you came? Did he anoint you to just do church? Man of God, now that you have arrived in a measure, what are you doing with that anointing? I am doing ministry. Ministry, I am enjoying myself. Wake up! There is a madman who is waiting for you. There is a young man who you need to lift in ministry who will be strengthened and go and save his family and save other generations. Please hear me. We are wrapping up, but you have to get this lesson. For everyone who arrives, and it's a language we like to use in Nigeria, I have... Let me tell you the next assignment. Look for the madman in Gadara. When you arrive, it's proof that you conquered the storm. So we celebrate you for beating the storm hands down. But realize every time you arrive, your next assignment is to locate the madman in Gadara for the sake of the gatherings. Rise up on your feet, please. We're going to pray just three prayer points tonight. Prayer point number one will be that God would grant us the strength to have the resilience, to have the stamina and the staying power to continue when the storms of life come. I wish I would tell you storms would not, not come, but I would be lying to you. If you want to get to the throne, the pathway is the cross. Oh Joseph, if you want to sit with Pharaoh, be ready to enter the well, go to the prison. I said it in a teaching somewhere that the prison is where both good and bad people meet. Every time you see people in the prison, be careful because Joseph is there too. Not everybody is a criminal. Every time you see men on the cross, be careful Jesus is there too. He is just between two thieves. He may not be a thief. This is already a word for someone. Don't generalize people. You may see Joseph in the prison. But not everybody got there because of a crime of their own. You may see men hanging on various crosses. Don't generalize. Jesus is there too. He's not dying for himself. 
He's dying for the world. There are thieves that pay the price for their own foolishness. But there are others who are dying for others. You must have the grace to discern. Are you ready to pray? Prayer point number one. Lord, I obtain grace that as I start this journey to the other side, regardless the storms that come, I will arrive. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I am determined to go to the other side spiritually. I am determined to go to the other side financially. I am determined to go to the other side in destiny. Regardless the storms that I face, I declare that I intend to arrive. Jesus is with me. Are you praying? Obtain grace. Though I walk through the valley low, I'll feel no evil. By the water still my my heart will trust in you, Lord. My heart will trust. Someone is drawing strength for the journey tonight. So I walk through the valley, Lord. I feel no Please look at me. We're wrapping up. Please lend me your attention, everyone. Following and here. Someday you will need to move from being a tenant to a landlord. It is not prophecy. You will have to go to the other side. Someday you will have to take responsibility and raise those children. Everybody has another side to your story. Do not be afraid of making progress to the other side. I can tell you one thing for sure. The other side is not a bed of roses. Faith, they say, does not just make things easy. It makes things possible. The assignment of faith is not to make your journey easy. That is the assignment of favor. The assignment of faith is to make your journey possible. Someday, you have to make up your mind that I'm tired of begging and borrowing. Listen, I have to go to the other side financially. It will take courage. Let us go to the other side. Tell your mind, let us go to the other side. Tell your spiritual life, let us go to the other side. A day will have to come, you look at your wife and say, My dear, he called us to ministry. Thank God for the level we are operating now. But there is need to go to the other side. I can't be the one depending on people to give me money all the time. And I keep praying for others to prosper so they tip me. I can't be the man of God sitting in jealousy and pain and watching God use others. It is time to go to the other side. Listen to me. For someone here, this is a prophetic word. You have encompassed this mountain long enough. Stop celebrating mediocrity as a local champion. It's time to stretch to the other side. Can I tell you this? Don't be so emotionally connected. Yesterday is jealous. 
Yesterday will never allow you to enter into tomorrow. Yesterday is like a jealous personality. You must obtain the unemotional determination to leave yesterday for the sake of tomorrow. Yesterday will want to recycle itself in your life. From one room, one day the Holy Ghost starts telling you, do you not think you should stroll around Abuja and check if you can even find three or four plots of land and you want to rebuke it? No, where will I get the money from? All that I have is 100,000. Listen to me. God is speaking to you. For as long as you are unwilling to sustain the courage to go to the other side, for someone you may not have the money, but go and find out where the land is after this conference. Go and stay there and look at it. I cannot buy it, but my eyes have seen it. Can I tell you, one of the ways that you make God Omega is by making Him Alpha. He will never become Alpha when He has not become Omega. Start with Him and put pressure on His integrity to finish. I should go abroad and educate myself, but where will the help go to? Go online and find out what it takes to start. Just start with Jesus and be sure that you will arrive. You alone will fail, but you and Jesus cannot fail. Are we together? I came here to challenge you tonight. Honestly speaking, there are many of us who have come past this mountain long enough. I don't mean to insult you, but there are people who need to begin to contend for certain levels of grace. You have been in this city for 10 years, 15 years, watching others come to build, watching others come to take risks by faith, and you've been giving all kinds of excuses. It's time to make up your mind. It is better to fail honorably. Listen, there is something called failing forward. When a plane is going forward and someone who is at the front seat goes back to use the restroom, is the man going behind? The plane is moving forward. He's in a plane that overall is going forward. Even though in the plane he is going backward, but the plane is too big for him to move it backwards. That's how your destiny is. Go and start the shop. What do I need? Courage. You don't need products. Open it. Open the shop. And start. Apostle, I'm in debt to the millions and the billions. How do I come out? I can tell you. If you think you're going to save your way to go out, you are joking. Listen to me. The first way to come out is to invite Jesus into the situation. You will never come out on your own. When you are in trouble, don't try to come out. Bring Jesus into the situation. There is something about Him that cannot let you remain in storms. Are we together? It is time to stretch to the other side. And please do not forget, whenever you arrive, remember, there is a madman in Gadara that all that journey, your financial journey, your intellectual journey, dear worshiper, when you arrive and your songs go to the nation, remember, there is a madman whose deliverance is tied to your songs. Do not allow arrival mentality destroy you. In this kingdom, we do not stop. We move from level to level to level to level. Now, before I speak over your life to end tonight, I want you to rebuke the storm. We have identified the storm, but Jesus taught us to not forbear with storms. No. When storms finish their assignments, do not let them continue. The assignment of a storm is to verify that you were sent. The assignment of a storm is to convince you that you are moving. When you find that information, the storm does not need to remain again. There are many of us, the storms have stayed beyond their validity period. And Jesus teaches you what to do, that you are about to do now. In the next one minute, please, without distraction, 
in the name of Jesus as a priest that you are, I'd like you to begin to rebuke every spirit that is back of any situation challenging your life and destiny. Believers pray. The spirit challenging my spiritual growth, challenging my prayer life, challenging my word life, challenging my passion for the house of God, challenging prophecy over my destiny. I come against you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Is someone praying? The spirit inhibiting church growth, inhibiting growth in my business. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. By the God of heaven, thus far have you come, no further shall you go. The Spirit fighting the arrival of the anointing upon my life and destiny. I come against you in the name of Jesus. I come against you by the blood of the Lamb. House on the rock, pray, decree and declare that thou mightest be justified. Every storm stopping my destiny helpers from locating me and lifting me by the Spirit. Every storm challenging my business. Every storm challenging Nigeria. Every storm challenging my family. Are you declaring by the Spirit? Please be still. Finances, hear the word of the Lord. Ministry, hear the word of the Lord. Business, hear the word of the Lord. Family life, hear the word of the Lord. Peace be still. I rebuke every spirit. I cast down imagination. Every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. I declare by the spirit of the living God. Please go ahead and pray. We're wrapping up. Pray. 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 Atmosphere. Sheep now. Chains be broke. Pray now. Holy. please hear me let me challenge you i like you to use this entire period of this conference as a moment of spiritual emphasis some of you need to go home and lock your gate and start walking like the priest that you are around your house and if they ask you what are you doing tell them the storm has stayed beyond its limit the storm has stayed beyond its limit and you begin to rebuke lay your hands upon your documents when you go back home in the name of jesus i end this season of pain it's time to arrive not just to move declare your arrival prophesied by the spirit hallelujah hallelujah You have prayed, but hear me, the disciples were too weak to rebuke the storm by themselves, but they were also not too proud to tell Jesus, help us. There are certain times you may not have the level of spiritual intelligence, 
nor the level of engracing to challenge the storms that stand before you. You must be quick to admit it and quickly call Jesus. And can I tell you this? The way Jesus walks is to empower men. Go to them that sell and buy. There are those that sell. This is why he gave in the church apostles and prophets, evangelists and pastors and teachers for the maturing of the saints. That means everything that makes for the saints to rise to their full prophetic potential is invested in it. Believe me when I tell you there are times you can pray, you can stretch, you can do everything to know to do. Doctors have taught us this. Military people have taught us this. There are times that a doctor can tell you, I am a doctor. There is DR or MD behind or in front of my name. But I admit that this situation is beyond my expertise. Allow the consultants to come. And they do not feel bad allowing the consultants to come. And you can be surprised that a very delicate and complicated surgery, you may see a man who does not have the form, but he's still consultant. I have sent, sent carpenters to judge those horns. Carpenters. I have seen a few professionals and consultants and many times they don't have any form. They, they can come and you, you see them, you can almost doubt. You don't know their consultants when they are standing. You know their consultants in the surgery room. And with, with digital precision, they would carry out a very delicate and complicated procedure and come out after a few hours and say it is done. This is how it is in the body of Christ. It is not to worship men, but let me tell you sincerely by God, there are people who by the privilege of the election of grace, they have been vested with certain possibilities. Every time you find out that you've exhausted your creativity around a storm, don't die in pride. Humble yourself. Let your defeat in pride not misrepresent Jesus. He can still come storms if you call him. Hallelujah. I believe that the servants of God here, I'm standing in faith and agreement with them to speak right now. Because there are many of us, you've done, you've prayed, you've fasted, you've done what you know to do. The situation does not seem to listen to you. But he sent us in his name to speak over that situation. And so I want you tonight to shout a loud amen as I speak and declare just one minute and we're done i just want to speak over your life prophecy is powerful it says they are taken for a prey and none see it restore in the name of jesus I, I stand joining faith with the father and the priest over this commission and the angel over this house and the servants of god here we connect our spirits and in the name that is above all names right now i decree and i declare everyone here whose journey has been impeded by a storm i speak to that storm this night not tomorrow this night come to an end now come to an end now Come to an end now. Come to an end now. Come to an end now. Every force that is stopping your advancement or that of your children, maybe financially, ministerially, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I speak to that spirit and I speak to that storm. Release God's people now. And I decree and declare over your life. Listen to me. Immediately the storm was calm. Time was no longer a factor. The Bible just said they arrived. How long it took after the storm. I told you when Jesus comes in the calculation changes. 
For some of you, God told you certain things in January. And as it is now, it is October. And you are saying, by the logic of men, when can I build this business? I tell you, when Jesus is introduced, you will be surprised. Let me speak to you by the Spirit of grace. In a matter of weeks for some of you, may the prophecy that you had right from January come to pass. Hear me? For some of you, as you go home right now, your prophecy will run faster than you and wait for you at home as a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. There are many of you, by the time you are coming here tomorrow morning, I decree and declare over your life, it will be tears of joy you will be coming here with. Can I tell you this? I would not do this except God put it in my heart. I want to declare over your finances this night by the Spirit. I'm just responding to what God is putting in my heart. You will marvel and wonder. I am telling you this by the God of heaven. Do not be like the man in Samaria who said, even if God will open the windows of heaven. Listen, there is a prophetic dimension to wealth in this kingdom. We are not just business people, there is a government above us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands over everyone here, especially those who have gone through all kinds of financial turmoils. I stand by the God of heaven between now and tomorrow that your faith can receive it. I declare return with strange testimonies. Return with strange testimonies. Supernatural connection to destiny help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hello. Tonight, Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.